Hey. Alright, this, um, I'm gonna try to, I can't really make this quick, just because all these videos are probably gonna be somewhat long. But I'm responding to my new British friend, his name is John Hammond, so I'm gonna give you a shout out, John. Hey, John. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm gonna start off by saying a couple things, John. Um, and this goes for anybody. Um, now John's main point was basically how cruel God is, but... This is what I want to start off by saying. For anybody who is atheist or agnostic, I want you to always keep in the back of your mind. If we're talking about the attributes of God, who the biblical God is, why he does what he does, that's different than a debate talking about is does a creator exist. Um, now, the reason why I say that is because in reality, um, his motives don't make him real or not. Now, what you expect him to be, and then his motives, that would be different. Like, if you expect him to be just a loving God, and you say, oh, he does something that seems different from loving, like wrath, you go, oh, he's not real because you guys say he's loving. Well, first of all, nobody said he's just loving. I'm not saying he's just loving. That is his greatest attribute. God is love. That's his greatest attribute. That is, that's his, and his greatest motive. Um, but he's, because there's more to him. You know, I, I'm I'm not going to say, you know, he's, what am I trying to say? I'm not going to say that he's not, I'm going to say he has plenty of different um, attributes. And it's true. And it, it shows in the Bible plenty of different times that he has plenty of different attributes. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to start by saying his motives don't make him real or not. Um, now, I'm just saying keep that in the back of your mind because I will answer your question. However, you can't, it, it, it's kind of fallacious to say I, God can't be real because he did this. Well, if this is what God, if God does that because this is his motives, that's the type of God he is. And how does that mean he's not real? You just didn't think that's the type of God he is. You didn't think he would be able to do something like that. You didn't think he was a God of wrath. So because of that, you go, oh, he's not real. Well, nobody told you he's not a God of wrath. He That is one of his many attributes. Um, <clears throat> second, when it, and it, it's not really second, it ties into the same thing. God doesn't, sorry, I have notes. Um, so I don't forget what I'm going to say. Um, it just goes in his motives don't prove his existence. He proves it, the way he he proves his existence in his word is by certain things he reveals. So, for example, I pulled up um two different Bible verses. There's plenty, but I pulled up uh, just two right now. So the one is basically his creation. Psalm 19, chapter. Verse 1 says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. So, pretty much when you look up, and you see creation around you, that's what declares his glory. Um, and that's what shows his, that he's real. Now, obviously then, you know, we can get into the whole debate of evolution and the Big Bang. Um, that's not the point of this video, though, so I'm not going to do that. But that's what declares his glory. Um, also, John 1, chapter 14, um, starts off, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as, uh, as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, some people will try to deny that Jesus Christ even existed, even walked the face of the earth, plant, I mean, period. Um, to be honest, if you deny that, you're you're denying history. If you say that at least the man Jesus Christ didn't walk, um, you're denying that because again you're denying God. But even I know, for example, Bart. I think his name is Bart Ehrman. He's an extreme um, atheist. However, he he had a debate where he said he had he had to stop. You know, in his debate and say, wait, 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 we're not even going to discuss whether Jesus Christ actually walked the earth. We know he did. So in other words, Jesus Christ, the man, at least, at the very least, did walk the face of this planet. 
And there's more evidence to prove that Jesus Christ was real than Julius Caesar. Because the Bible is so scrutinized, it's so many times we want to prove if Jesus Christ, the man, is real. Now, we have proven that plenty of times. And we have also proven plenty of times that the Bible is historically accurate. Um, if you don't want to take my word for it, do honest research and see for yourself that it really is historically accurate. Um, so that being said... If you are being honest with yourself, then you will find out that since the Bible is historically accurate, we do know that Jesus Christ walked the face of the earth, and we do know we have, you can't find fault in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the only perfect human being. Also, we know that Jesus Christ died on the cross, and also we know that Jesus Christ predicted his own death, and also we know that Jesus Christ did arise. Now, if we know all those things, now we can go ahead on a discussion of the divinity of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ has his divinity, Jesus Christ is, in fact, God. So that's another thing that proves God's existence, his glory. And then he came as flesh. Um, also, um, and this, again, ties into point one. Um God's attributes and his motives versus your idea of God. So, again, like I said, if your idea of God is and, and is God is just love, then, of course, what else God is won't fit in your your worldview of what God is or should be. And because of that, now you're going to deny him because you're going to go, OK, well, he's not supposed to do this. So since he's not supposed to do this, he must not be real. But who said he's not supposed to do that? Um, now, I, now I, I get into what he was talking about. So basically what he was asking was he was saying he doesn't need to know why God caused the flood. He just wants to know why it was so cruel. Um, now, <sighs> I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to give you one passage that basically... Let you know that God's not just a God of love. However, God's love is the greatest of all attributes. Um, it is in, I think it's pronounced Nahum. Nahum uh, chapter 1 verse 2. Um, God is jealous and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. Now... Of course, there's theology behind his attributes. Um, and basically, all it is, is... Well, in reality, it's just straightforward. If God avenges, he avenges. If he's a God of wrath, he's a God of wrath. Um, but it also says right after that, that God is slow to anger. <sighs> now, in regards to just the flood that we're talking about right now... Noah warned people for 120 years what was about to happen. He warned for 120 years. He know he warned them. Now, if anything, what should be fair is that God does not wait 120 years and He just wipes out everybody on the face of the planet. He should have done it right then, but He's slow to anger, and because His love is greater than His wrath, His love for His creation is that I wish. For none to perish. He says he in his word. He said. God wish, wishes for no man to perish. So. Because of his love. That's why he was so slow to do what he did. Now. Because God avenges. And the Lord. Uh, uh, the Lord avenges in his furious. And the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. So for 120 years. These people not only didn't listen. They kept hardening their hearts. And God said that. He. He, he knew their thoughts. It was pure evil. So they were his adversaries. So he had to take vengeance, which in his word he says he is. It, it, God God is also a God of wrath as, as well as a God of love. So he took vengeance. Um, now, why it was so cruel? Well, there's a couple ways you can approach this. To kind of compare it to... Because it, it's not easy to obviously know 
the attributes of God perfectly and understand exactly why he does what he does. Um, but in order to reveal that what he has done was set certain things in motion down here that kind of that reveal his attributes. So, for example, how vengeance and wrath work down here. If you were to offend one of your friends, your friend is probably going to be just mad at you. He's he not going to do anything crazy to you. He's just going to be mad at you. Now, if you were to offend somebody who's not your friend, then he may do something and may hurt you. Now, if you offend somebody who is not your friend and already is a, you know, somebody who is ang who's angry, angry all the time and or not angry all the time. Let's say, say somebody who's high in authority. Let's say you offend an FBI agent. And now this FBI agent has to work his, or anybody in authority, you know, equivalent to FBI agents or, or a policeman or whatever. And they have to, you know, um, exercise their authority. It's probably going to be even greater than the other two people you offended. Now let's say you go all the way up. Let's say you offend the President of the United States. Your consequences will probably be, will will be very great, because it's the president of the United States. Now let's move all the way up to God. God is higher than any other authority on this planet. All those little authorities, the bigger the authority it got, the greater the consequences. And now you're talking about the highest authority, so you're going to talk about the highest consequence. The highest consequence is death. He's going to work his wrath. His wrath is going to be much greater than the president's wrath. The president is much greater than just the, the, the policeman or whatever. The policeman is much greater than just this random guy. This random guy is much greater than your friend's wrath. So the wrath level goes up as the authority goes up. So you're now offending a holy God. A God who created you. A God of wrath. So what do you expect to happen? It's going to be, it's going to be very... It's what you call as cruel it's going to be pretty bad um, let me look directly into the camera i've been looking over here um so yeah it is very it is going to be it's not gonna be fun um everybody on the face of the planet offended him and they offended him pretty badly since and they since they did they're under his wrath like i said because he's slow to anger he gave them 120 years to turn to him and basically repent, but they didn't do it. Now, you also have to realize what um, type of guy we're talking about here. We're talking about an all-powerful, an omniscient, um, omnipotent um, God. Now, this God is eternal. Because I'm actually going to take your instance and I'm going to make it seemingly harder for me but i'm gonna because i know eventually you'll get to this point god is eternal god's attributes are eternal since god's attributes are eternal that means god's wrath is eternal if god's wrath is eternal god's wrath will you'll keep feeling god's wrath eternally because god's wrath is eternal again how you can equate it down to here let's say you murder somebody down here as long as you're down here, you're going to be feeling the wrath of the authority who caught you. Life in prison. So your whole life is gone. So everything down here is now gone. So since this authority is eternal, your whole eternity, you're going to be feeling his wrath. He's eternal. Means his attributes are eternal. His attribute is wrath. His wrath is eternal. So probably your next question you know how deep it can get is well why would god allow people to go to hell and suffer for eternity well i there you go if he's eternal his wrath is eternal if his wrath is eternal you're going to get eternal punishment now that also goes again goes through the gospel which i try to get to in every in every video and the gospel says 
if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you can escape this eternal wrath. And you can escape his eternal judgment and you can be in his presence. God does not just cast people into hell. Literally, you are walking, you are following the devil. The Lord said that the lake of fire is reserved for Lucifer and his fallen angels. So, basically, hell is not for you. It's not. We can't. We can't handle hell. Hell is that. It's it's that. That bad. Um. So since it's not for you, you shouldn't be going there. But God says, well, Jesus said, if you're if you're. Basically, said if you're not. I can't remember the verse word for word, but basically, if you're not for me, you're against me. So if you're not following Jesus, you're only following one other person. That's the devil. So if you keep following the devil. You're going to follow him exactly where he's going. It's already appointed that he's going into the lake of fire. So you're following him into the lake of fire. And there you, again, God's attributes are eternal. There you're suffering God's wrath, an eternal attribute. So when you say things like, how can God be so cruel? Well, it's not God being cruel. God is living out all his attributes. That's God is, that is his wrath. His wrath is eternal. And his wrath is... It's pretty bad. He, if he created all this just speaking, just imagine how horrible it can be when he exercises his wrath. Um, so, there you go. Is it cruel? Well, in this life, is capital punishment cruel? Yeah. It is. It's very cruel to be put into an electric chair and to be electrocuted and smoke coming out your head. and, and, and That's very cruel. To, at one point, the, you know, there were a time in history's past, you know, at one point where execution would be being beheaded, being, sh you know, shot, being stoned. These things are cruel. But your, um, I guess your evil doings, I guess you could put it like that, your evil doings, um, you, you just have to live with the consequence. So, so the higher the act, the, to, the higher the authority, the higher the wrath. So this wrath, of course, this wrath seems cruel because this God is... He has all wrath. There is no wrath greater than his. He, There is no suffering that can be inflicted that is greater than the suffering he can inflict upon a human. He can inflict upon anybody. God says, do not fear him who can kill the body but not the soul, but fear him who has authority to kill the body and cast the soul into hell. I think that, again, I'm not... I'm not I'm very good at word for word. Um, but yeah, so if you fear him, he can inflict that type of wrath on you. Nobody else can do that. He can inflict that type of wrath on you. So when you're talking about that type of God, which is that's that's the type of God we're talking about. Now, if you know, we would all want we all want that loving God and we have that loving God. But that's not all you're getting, because at the same time. Like I said, his love encompasses is greater than every other one of his attributes. Reason why his love is greater than every one of his other attributes, his love encompasses his other attributes. If you did something horrible, horrible, like kill six million Jews like Hitler did, you should probably... Let's not do that because they, they're, they're, in that time there was not much authority over him that was going to even try to do much. So let's just say just you did something horrible like slaughtered innocent children. And then you got caught by the authorities. Yeah, you're probably going to get capital punishment. You're probably going to get the death sentence. That's, again, that that's pretty bad. But... Again, like I said, you you the greater the greater the authority, the greater the pun, and, and the greater the 
the act that you did, the greater what the greater punishment should be. You're offending a holy God, a righteous God, a God who is perfect, the greatest authority. So you kind of can't expect much less to happen. You can't expect a slap on the wrist. Now, like I said, he is loving because if he didn't do that, if we don't punish people who are evil, if we don't punish that person who slaughtered those kids, that's not very loving. Is it, we're we're going to let him go? Or what if he does it again? Well, then that's not very loving to let him go. So God's not going to let let that just let it go. That's his, his adversary, it's his enemy. If you keep doing this, now, like I said, he warned them for 120 years and they didn't want to listen. So he had to exercise his wrath. Um, so anyway, that was just the answer to that question. Um, keep the questions rolling. Um, more comments. Um, subscribe. Send me video responses. Do whatever. I'm going to put the link to my last... Yeah, I put the link to the last video into... into into this description box um, so you can see that that was I was answering questions from the first video I posted um, so yes comment subscribe you know if you have any more questions you know I, I'm, I'm this is this is what I do I like to answer these questions I like the um, you know dive into the theology of all these things and, and yeah you know just have some good conversation with some people um, because, again, like I said, if, if I'm right, which I believe I am, this is your eternal soul we're talking about. If I'm wrong, we're not talking about anything. It is what it is. If I'm right, this is your eternal soul. And, John, guess what? I don't know you, but because I met you through the YouTube, you seem like a pretty cool guy. I'm concerned for your eternal soul. Um, but I'll continue to answer your questions. However, like I said, consider the first, consider what I said in the beginning of the video. Are we talking about is a creator real? Or are we talking about the God of the Bible and his attributes are being unfair to you? Because remember, his attributes being fair or unfair has nothing to do with his existence. Just consider that. Um... Because at the end of the day, we go through the Bible and I answer all these questions for you. If I give you the perfect answer, at the end of the day, you'll go, well, a creator still doesn't make sense. And then it's kind of like, so what do we do all this for if you a creator doesn't make sense to you? Like I said, I would say, really dwell on Psalm 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Dwell on whether that really, if it really shows the glory of God and dwell on John 1.14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And if Jesus really was perfect, and he did all these things, and he made some great supernatural claims and showed his supernatural um, ability... He might be God. So, those are the things I would want to do. I would say dwell on not his motives and his attributes. That has nothing to do with his existence. Um. Anyway, um, comment, subscribe, leave a video response, ask questions, ask away. Talk to you guys soon. God bless.